Hello everyone, uh, today uh, we will start uh, our lessons from the book of John, chapter 4. Actually, we have to read uh, all the chapter of chapter 4, um, but for now, let us read chapter 4, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4, it says, But he needed to go through Samaria. Everyone, Jesus, he knows each and one of us very well. Actually, for Jesus, he didn't have to go through Samaria. Uh, in order for him to go to Galilee, there was another shortcut or shorter way or a better way for him to go to Galilee. However, this time, Jesus told the disciples, I needed to go through Samaria. Why did he say that I needed to go through Samaria? Because in Samaria, he knew that there is somebody that he has to go and meet. Who is that? It was a Samaritan woman. Everyone, Jesus, he was the Jew. During that time, Samaritans are the ones who are mixed blood with the Jews and the Gentiles. So Samaritans, at times, they were considered very dirty. They were considered like the animals. So the Jews, they didn't even look at the Samaritans. They didn't even talk to Samaritans. So when you look at Jesus, he didn't have to go through Samaria to go to Galilee. But this time, he is saying, I needed to go through Samaria because he wanted to go to Samaria and then he wanted to meet with Samaritan woman. Why do you think Jesus, he had to go through Samaria to meet with Samaritan woman? Because Jesus, he knew this woman very well. He knew that this woman, her heart was prepared to meet with Jesus. Everyone, when you look throughout the Bible, not anyone is able to meet with Jesus. The hearts who are, a, who are prepared to meet with Jesus were able to meet with Jesus. Like I said also in last class, John chapter 5, and there is the men who had infirmity for 38 years. There were many people who needed the help of Jesus, but not all of them were able to meet with Jesus. He met only one person at the pool of Bethesda. Why? Because the one whose heart was prepared to meet with Jesus was only one. John chapter 8, and there is the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Many people at that time brought this woman and accused her. But after meeting with Jesus, also they have realized that they were sinners like this woman. They all needed Jesus in their life too. But they could not meet with Jesus. Only one person was able to meet with Jesus, and that was the woman who was called in the act of adultery. Everyone, in that way, when you look in the Bible, every chapter, every book in the Bible, there are those people who were able to meet with Jesus, who were the ones who were able to meet with Jesus. Those are people hearts whose hearts were prepared to meet with Jesus was able to meet with Jesus. Then what is the prepared heart to be able to meet with Jesus? Who are the ones that are able to meet with Jesus? They are the ones who accurately realized their true image. Jesus had known this Samaritan woman very well. Hey, I know if I go to Samar uh, Samaria, then I want to meet Samaritan woman. At sixth hour, this woman is going to come to the fountain to draw the water. When she comes, I'll be waiting over there at six, at sixth hour. Everyone, what time is the sixth hour? Sixth hour, if you were to calculate that in today's hour, you have to add six more hours. So then what time is that? 12 noon, right? Everyone, 12 noon, this place is almost like a desert. So the sunlight is a scorching sun and it's very hot. So most of the time, people would not come at 12 to draw the water. Either they come 
early in the morning to draw the water and to wash their clothes around the fountain. Or around at 5 or around at 6 when the sun is about to set. <clears throat> that is the time and that the ladies, women, and they will get around the fountain to draw the water and to do the laundry. No one will come at 12 noon to come and draw the water. But this woman, she had to come at noon in that scorching sun when the weather is very hot. That is the time that she came to the fountain to draw the water. Why? Because she is a Samaritan woman. In Samaria, there were many Samaritan people. However, out of the Samaritan, Samaritans, they were considered such as a dirty people, wicked people, evil people. They are the mixed blood people. However, out of the wicked and the dirty people, she was also considered as a dirty people. Samaritans are already dirty. But in that community, even those people in that community did not want to do anything to do with her. Why? Because she was known in that village for having many, many husbands. She would meet with this person and she would break up. She would meet with another husband and she would break up. She would meet with another husband and break up. And she was living with the sixth husband. But even with the sixth husband, she was not satisfied. She was not having the happiness. She was not having joy in her heart. Many people, they were pointing at her. Look at that woman. She has five, she has five husbands. She's a dirty woman. She's a wicked woman. Even Samaria, by Samaritan people, who are already considered as a dirty people. But in that community, she was also considered as a dirty person and she was an outcast even in that village. Imagine, in that village, she was one of the most dirty and evil and wicked person. She realized her true image. That's why she could not even go to draw the water early in the morning or later in the uh, afternoon to draw the water. She would also want to go when the weather is cool, but she couldn't go because she realized herself how dirty and evil she was through Samaria. Why? Because she wanted to go and meet with that wicked and the dirty woman. Everyone, all of us, so we are the wicked and the dirty people. But there are people who accurately realize that their true image and there are people Though they are wicked and evil and a dirty person, they have not yet realized their true image. In the eyes of God, all those people in Samaria, they're also as evil, dirty, and wicked people like this Samaritan woman. However, they could not see their true image. Only that one woman in the Bible called a Samaritan woman was able to realize how wicked how evil, how dirty she was. And now Jesus, as, she, as he was going to Galilee, he said, I needed to go through Samaria. Why did he need to go through Samaria? Because he knew this woman very well, that there is this one Samaritan woman who had five husbands and living with the sixth husband, but she was not satisfied, even with that sixth husband. She was not having the happiness with that, with that husband as well. She was in pain. She was in suffering. She really needed Jesus in her life. Jesus knew her very accurately. Everyone today, <coughs> Jesus, he says, I also needed to go through Nairobi. Why? Because Jesus, he wants to meet together with us. Who are us? Who is us? Who are we? Who am I? I am the person like this Samaritan woman. But we are evil, dirty, and wicked people like Samaritan women. But some of us, we don't accurately realize how dirty, 
evil and wicked person that I am. Jesus, he wants to come to Nairobi. Jesus, he wants to come to Kenya. Why? Because he wants to meet with us. He knows us very well. As much as he knows the Samaritan woman, he also knows us very well. How? As a very wicked, dirty, and evil person, and that we are the people who really need Jesus in our life. Let us open to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 6. Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 6. It says, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. What did he say? You are in whose hands? You are in my hands. It says, Look, as the clay is in your hand, in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Everyone, we are in whose hands? We are in the hands of the potter. We are in the hands of Jesus. And in his hands, Jesus, he knows about us very well. He knows us in and out. He knows how evil and dirty and wicked we are. He knows that's why how we are in much need of Jesus in our lives. He knows us very well. That's why he wants to come through Samaria. He wants to come to Samaria. He wants to come to Nairobi. He wants to come to Kenya to meet with each and one of us. In the same way, Jesus, he came to Samaria to meet with Samaritan woman. Jesus knew about this woman very well and wanted to meet together with this Samaritan woman. Samaritan woman, she thought that if she meet with the first husband, the first husband was the husband. I don't know, this is out of my imagination. Ah, uh, If I meet with a husband who has a lot of money, then I will be able to live a happy life. She meet with a man who had a lot of money, but that could not fulfill her heart and that could not satisfy her heart. That could not bring the happiness in her life. So she divorced with that husband. And she met with another husband. Now when I met with the man with a lot of money, his heart is only high and arrogant. He despises me and he ignores me. Now let me meet with, meet with someone who really loves me and take care of me. So met with such kind of a man and got married. But he doesn't have any education. He doesn't know about so many things, though he would care for her so much. He is a very uneducated. So that's why that husband could not also fulfill her heart. So she thought, ah, if I meet with a husband who has a PhD degrees, then I must be happy in my heart. Everyone, as she was meeting with the first husband, the second husband, the third husband, the fourth husband, I, if I meet with this kind of a husband, then I will be satisfied in my heart. But nothing of the world was able to satisfy of her heart. Everyone, as we live our life, we think, if I live for myself, then I will be very happy. But that is not true. Let us take a look. <clears throat> Verse 10. Let's uh, look at it from verse 7. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, um, being a Jew, ask a drink from me? A Samaritan woman for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans Jesus answered and said to her if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you give me a drink 
you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drink of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into the everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. Every now, this Samaritan met with Jesus. They began to have the conversation. At first, in the heart of Samaritan woman, she was having a distance in her heart with Jesus. Excuse me, you are a Jew. Usually the Jews never deal with Samaritans, never talk to Samaritans. But why you who is a Jew asking a water from me? <laughs> Is that right? Why are you talking with me? Why are you trying to have a conversation with me? Everyone, she was so surprised. She was having, like, having a conversation with Jesus, but it's very awkward. But the more she is having conversation together with Jesus, her heart is coming closer, closer, and closer to Jesus. And then Jesus told this woman, whoever drinks of this water, which I will give, right? Water will thirst again. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, right? But the water that I shall give him will become in him, a fountain of water springing up into the everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Everyone, if you had received this kind of statement from Jesus, what would you think? What would you think? Right now, Jesus is asking you a question. He's telling you, Hey, if you drink the water that I shall give you, you will never thirst again. Everyone think about this word. Is there such a water in this world where you drink it and you will never thirst again? There is no such a world. Right now, what Jesus is saying is a nonsense. It doesn't make sense. But she says, the woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus, I really need that water. I don't want to come to this world to draw the water anymore. Because the people are all pointing at me, telling me that you are a dirty woman. You are an evil woman. You are a wicked woman. I am so embarrassed to come to the world. That's why I came at the sixth hour to draw the water. But Jesus, give me that water so that I don't have to come here again. What is she doing right now? Whether she is able to understand the word of Jesus or not, right now she is receiving the word of Jesus the way it is. She is receiving the word of Jesus the way it is. She is listening to the word of Jesus the way it is. If I was there in that situation, then I would not receive that word. Hey Jesus, are you joking with me? Is there such a water you would drink and you would never thirst again? Everyone, she was the woman who accurately realized her true image. That's why whether the word of Jesus is making sense or not, she is receiving the word of Jesus the way it is. Yesterday, the other class, we spoke about John chapter 3. Nicodemus. Nicodemus, he was a Pharisee. He was a ruler of the Jew. 
That's why he had the position and he began to trust in himself. That's why he could not receive the word of Jesus the way it is. In John chapter 3, three times Jesus tried to preach the gospel and explain the gospel to Nicodemus, but he could not receive it. Why? Because to him, the gospel doesn't make sense. He cannot understand the gospel. So he set his thoughts above the word of Jesus. But what about this Samaritan woman? She was not a Pharisee. She was not a Jew. She was not a special person. Instead, she was a Samaritan. She was Samaritan, and even in the community of Samaritan, even amongst the Samaritan, she was despised. Is that true? Even amongst the Samaritan, she was despised. People were pointing at her. Hey, you, you're a woman who had five husbands and living with the sixth husband. You're a dirty woman. You're a wicked woman. You're an evil woman. Even in the community of Samaritan, Samaria, she was an outcast. She was despised. She was bullied. But she realized her true image. She didn't reject it. She realized that she is a truly evil and dirty and wicked person. That's why when Jesus had spoken the word which she could not understand, if you drink the water that I shall give, then you will never thirst again. Where is such a water in the whole world? But she receives that word the way it is in her heart. When she received that word the way it is in her heart, she was able to receive the true salvation. At first, at first, when Samaritan met with Jesus, Jesus was only a Jew in the eyes and in the heart of the Samaritan. In verse 3, I'm sorry, verse 9. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew? Right now, when Samaritan woman had first met with Jesus, in the heart of Samaritan woman, Jesus was who? Jesus was a Jew. Just a Jew. Normal people of the Jew. But... When you come to verse 19, while having the conversation, a Jew, a normal Jew in a heart, had to turn into a prophet. Verse 19, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Right now, Jesus had upgraded in a heart, right? At first, Jesus was just a Jew in a heart, but now Jesus in a heart became a prophet. But after hearing the gospel, in our heart, Jesus became Messiah in our heart. Let us take a look at verse 25. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Hey, the Messiah, that Christ it's me. I am the Jesus. I am the one who has saved you from your sin. After she had to realize that, she was so happy in her heart. Everyone, who is Jesus in your heart? In the heart of the some people, in the hearts of our brothers and sisters, Jesus is just a Jew, just a human being. To some people in our heart, Jesus is a prophet. Ah, Jesus, he gives us a good word. Yes, his image encourages us. Yes, his word is, his word is good. But to some people, Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is Christ. Jesus is the Son of God who saved us from all of our sins, who saved us from all of our problems. Who saves us from all of our sickness and all of our disease? That Jesus is Christ in our heart. Everyone, 
why don't you ask yourself a question? Is Jesus a Jew in your heart? Is Jesus a prophet in your heart? Or is Jesus a Christ in your heart? If Jesus is truly a Christ in your heart, you should not have any sin in your heart. Why? Because the meaning of the name Jesus is to save his people from their sins. Everyone, if Jesus is truly a Jesus, a Christ, a Messiah in your heart, you should not have any darkness inside of your heart. Everyone, if Jesus is truly a Christ, a Messiah in your heart, then you should not have any grudges, difficulties, pain, and suffering in your heart because Jesus has saved all of you from difficulties. And also Jesus has saved all of you from your problems. Jesus has saved all of you from your sadness. That Jesus is not just the Jesus in name, but Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, who saves us from our sin, our darkness, our problems, and our difficulties. Everyone. Is Jesus really a Christ and Messiah in your heart? Or is Jesus in your heart just a human being, a Jew? After this woman, he had realized that that Jesus who was at the well, ah, he is a Jesus. He's the Son of God. He's Messiah. He's Christ. She was so happy. She was able to meet with true everlasting water who is Jesus. Now she doesn't thirst again. Her heart, her spirit doesn't thirst again because she has met with true husband. Everyone, right now, which husband are you living with? Are you living with the sixth? Are you living with the fourth? Or are you living with the first husband? All those things cannot fulfill your heart. Things of the world cannot fulfill your heart. Things of the world cannot satisfy your heart. Your own decisions of your life cannot satisfy your heart and fulfill your life. Only Jesus, only knowing Jesus as Christ and Messiah can fulfill your heart and solve all, your, all of your problems. When you truly meet with that Jesus who is Christ and Messiah in your heart, you'll be safe from your sin and you'll be safe from your problems. You'll be safe from your disease and that your heart will be filled with light. Your hearts will be filled with joy. Your hearts will be filled with happiness. And starting from verse 28, she's living a completely a new life, a changed life, going back to the village and witnessing this gospel. I hope also all of you can live that renewed life of preaching the gospel filled in your heart with a great joy and happiness inside of you. I hope in your heart through John chapter 4 realize that that Jew who was at the well is your husband. I hope that Jesus, that Christ, Messiah can be true husband in your heart. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next session.